Hello, welcome to Lemon Studios, where we talk anything and everything entertainment. I'm, of course, Lemon himself, Zeke Lemon, and this is my review for Monday Night Raw of 5-13-2024, I believe. But before we get into that, let's get the house clean all the way, shall we? I'm just leave a like, comment below, let me know your thoughts on Monday Night Raw's episode. And of course, hit that subscribe button as it helps me grow into my YouTube career. I would greatly appreciate it. Now, let's get into the review. So, we continue on with the King and Queen of the Ring tournament. We have our round two matchups, which was Gunther versus Kofi Kingston, Ilya versus Jay, and uh, we on the Queen side, we had Io versus Shayna, and then we had Zoe versus Lyra. Um, all the matches were great. Uh, I love what they're doing with the King and the Queen of the Ring tournament. Uh, I love how important they are making them feel. Um, it just feels like a really big thing in that whoever does win it will have truly earned it. All the matches have been given time. Everyone has looked stronger coming back on the other side. And I just think this is really beneficial throughout. And I also love the stories that we are telling throughout the tournament, like having Ilya and Gunther have their moment. There were two moments, really. They had the moment where Gunther uh, was talking with Ilya. Well, not talking with Ilya, but stared at Ilya after Ilya had his uh, backstage promo. And then afterwards, when he was going up to face to face with Jay, and then he looked at him and Ilya looked back at him like, it's obviously going to happen later down on the road. I really thought we were going to get it on next week. I really thought that was going to be the Raw Finals because if you haven't followed me, you know my pick was that we are going to get two youngsters going at it in the uh, King of the Ring Finals with Carmelo Hayes and, and Ilya, but that's obviously not going to be the case anymore. If you didn't watch Raw, Ilya did not win and Jay went over, but it makes perfect sense. It's fine. Like I said on the SmackDown, um, King and like my uh, SmackDown review, is that this tournament, they have to make the biggest stars go over. There's not going to be a lot of upsets. I thought you could play with it a little bit in round two, uh, but I do completely get like, look, let's have our main eventers move on to the finals and just really make this thing mean something. And then I will sure next year's tournament, we will have some upsets and we will take some chances because the tournament will be reestablished that it is a big thing and that you can, and you can, and you can do that. But this year, I totally get it. You, you just gotta you just gotta let the big stars go through the tournament and be truly you know the best man win, which will probably be Gunther. I could see Jay going over next week. Um, it really depends on uh, Gunther's uh, flight situation, I believe. If he is cleared that he can travel overseas again, I do not see how Gunther doesn't go over and goes to Saudi Arabia in the finals, presumably to face Randy Orton. Um, but I really wouldn't mind if Jay goes over either, especially if they do Tamatango going over because then there is a, there's a storyline there as well. As for the women's section, I think it's pretty clear, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. I think it's pretty clear that Lyra is going to Saudi, especially if you look at the renders, Lyra and Tiffany already are much more covered up. And you know, when they go to Saudi, the women have to be covered up more. So it just, to me, I just feel like, did they spoil it accidentally? Because Lyra and, and Tiffany are the only ones that are fully covered. I'm just like, is that our finals? I mean, I had Tiffany going to the finals and most likely winning. Um, but it, it, I just feel like they, they really spoiled it because they do look the more, most covered on their renders. Um, as for everything else within on the show, I like what we did with the Alpha Academy. Obviously, we are teasing the breakup. I'm pretty sure... Uh, the Creed brothers and Ivy Nile are going to replace the Alpha Academy. I could see maybe Otis staying, but I highly doubt that. I do think at some point they are going to break free, and it's, I think it's going to hurt the hurt Maxine, Otis, and uh, Tazawa more than benefit because this is really purely just for Chad, and I think that is the way to go, especially with how much he is just bullying them. The man, I I mean, I felt it for Otis when he slapped him. I was like, damn, that slap hit harder than Becky's punch. If you know, you know, because damn, that punch was something. But yeah, the uh, storyline behind it, I like the, you know, personal versus um, professional, because again, with Bronson, it's just business. He got his win against the Czar, and then he got out. He got his towel match. He don't need to, he don't need to wreck habit anymore. He got his business. Sammy and Otis match happens. Uh, Gable goes back to, you know, uh, harming Otis uh, mentally if you will, and physically, and then Sammy is going back to attack Sam to Gable because it is personal to him, which is why I do have Bronson going over at King and Queen of the Ring and winning the IC title. It might be too soon to take it off Sammy, but I do think 
flip-flopping the titles a little bit will be beneficial for WWE right now with everyone coming off of long reigns. And I think the longest reigns, like the IC title and the WWE Championship, some flip-flopping, even though the right people who should have the titles have them, will be beneficial, and especially, you know, with Sammy being such a good baby face, it won't take hard, uh, take that long for them to uh, get behind Sammy again to win the title bag or go for a bigger title. I could see Sammy versus Damian for the World Heavyweight title or Sammy versus Drew, depending on who wins the belt. Uh, the Drew segment was also very good, too. It was a very good start. Uh, still teasing the CM Punk stuff. I haven't been really talking about the Drew and Punk stuff, even though it has been great. It's just because, you know, it's not... Not that it's not relevant. It's just that that match is not coming up anytime soon. It's probably not coming until post-Clash of the Castle. Because I'm assuming... They did the J versus the, the Damien versus Drew uh, segment is because Damien will not be defending his title at King and Queen of the Ring, which I'm I'm kind of going back and forth on with how they're doing the title matches because Cody is obviously defending his title at, at every PLE, which he probably should because you know the with Roman he hardly showed up and now here is this here's a uh, Cody now having that title being showcased everywhere. Totally get it. That's fine. And I also kind of like how, okay, well, you got this PLE, so you get the next PLE. Becky didn't defend her world title at Backlash. I'm assuming if Rhea was healthy, they would have done Rhea versus Liv at Backlash. But Bailey had it at Backlash, so Bailey gets it at King and Queen of the Ring. I'm assuming it's going to be Bailey at Clash of the Castle, probably facing Piper Niven since she is from Scotland. But the flip flopping I like, but I also don't like because it just kind of does kind of feel like your champion is just on pause for three weeks, you know what I mean? At least give them a, you know, a mini feud for free TV that, you know, I mean, I guess that is still filler. I don't know. I'm still going back and forth on it with how they're doing the uh, titles. And then the only other segment that I can think of that happened on this episode of Raw was the uh, Fatal 4-Way Tag Team Match for the uh, World Tag Team Titles number one contender match. I just didn't like the winners. I, I think the Judgment Day needs to move on from the Tag Team Championships. Uh, the breakup is going to happen very, very soon as we continue the, the cracks. And I think they do need to break up before Rhea Ripley comes back to really submit her more as a face. So I just don't see really the point of them going for the Tag titles, especially since they won't win. JD's going to get pinned. <laughs> and I, I, I like the match. I mean... I kind of like what they're doing because I saw it on uh, Twitter as well that someone said, man, I feel like we get these Fatal 4-Way tag team matches like every three weeks for both tag divisions. But the point is to deliver every time. To me, it was just the finish that kind of fell flat to me. I get it. They're trying to get Carlito to join the Judgment Day to get back up to help with Rey Mysterio, blah, 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 blah. But the breakup is happening. I don't need them to go for the tag team titles. I just need this constant like, eeriness eeriness to just go after Damien's title of anything and not look for other gold and um yeah so <clears throat> this episode of Raw was really good the action was very again the matches for the Keenan Queen of the Ring tournament really establishing that they mean something I mean Eo and Shayna surpassed my expectation expectations I mean they were great with the Mae Young Classic they always had a good little rivalry but you know on the main roster it's just a little different, regardless if, you know, Triple H was both booking the Mae Young Classic and NXT when they were doing their thing. It's just the main roster is a little different. And the fact that they actually let them go for a good while. Shayna looked great. I hope they let they actually give her something now. Um, they can go for the tag team titles, you know. Get Shayna and Zoe back over there now that Zoe's out too. Uh, her match with Lyra was probably the weakest out of all of the King and Queen uh, tournament uh, matches. But, you know, it's just that something had to be last. But I still think they did great. I also like how Lyra is starting to get more over. Again, Jay versus Ilya. I can see the argument why, yeah, we should give it to Ilya. But Jay is the bigger star. And they do need to, like, really make this turn and mean something. And then, oh, Braun Breaker. I don't really know what they're doing with him. Because the, the explanation they give is absolutely crap. Like, I would have challenged. If I was Braun Breaker, he should have said... I had I have to earn my way into the tournament. Ilya Lily just got drafted. How is that? Please make that make sense. That's a big plot hole. Uh, look, I get why they didn't have Braun in the tournament. It's because he wasn't going to win, and they really want him to go on this undefeated streak and kind of become like another Goldberg. 
which I don't know if I'm fully on. I'm ready for Braun to start selling and actually have some great matches because he's a great superstar all around. He is a future main eventer. He truly is. We just need to get him back in the ring and actually have some programs. What happened to that segment with Sheamus, you know? Like, let's... Sheamus versus Braun Breaker seems like a, a very fun time. Let's do it. Let's really, really do it. So, yeah, this episode overall, overall was really fun. I am really looking forward to SmackDown. I'm hoping the women may event that. Um because <clears throat> both Queen of the Ring matches for SmackDown really, really excite me. Jade versus uh, Nia and Tiffany versus Bianca. I, out of the two, I do hope that one is the main event. But I will be fine with Nia versus Jade because then Bianca and Tiffany could get more time. But I am really looking forward to Bianca versus Tiffany. Uh, <coughs> so yeah, uh, comment below. Let me know your thoughts on this episode of Raw. And again, hit that subscribe button. That's helps you grow to my YouTube career. We also do movie reviews here. Got The Strangers coming out this week, uh, Chapter 1, and If, the family movie. So if you want to hear my thoughts on that, hit that subscribe button. Also, for my review for SmackDown, and of course, King and Queen of the Ring, and for everything coming on within WWE, minus NXT. Um, but yeah, until next time, guys, I'll see you here at Lemon Studios.